<laughs> one thing I really like about my personal relationship with the Lord is He never leaves anything the same. In other words, for me, when I start to get into a rut or it seems like that I've settled for maybe not his best or somehow I've slowed down or maybe not gone all the way that he wanted me to, then he takes me aside and he doesn't chastise me or beat me up, but rather he takes the time to talk to me, to share with me his heart, his desire, his purpose for my life. And I like that, you know, because I didn't sign on to this gig to be just second best or second rate. And, you know, I didn't sit down and decide one day, oh, I'm going to invent some new religion or some new way to find God or to follow some higher power. But rather, one of the things that makes me different, I think, than a lot of other people was that a lot of people, when they were getting saved, they were being saved from some sin in their life, some major disaster. And frankly, in my time in my life, I was just amazed by the people that were full of love, and I got saved from love, not from repentance from sin or some major issues that I didn't know if I had any or not. I mean, my earliest testimonies usually have the have <laughs> the preface that says I did everything backwards <laughs> I didn't get saved from sin I got saved in sin <laughs> but God wanted to show his grace and mercy to me through that experience so that I would understand the power of his love the majesty of his grace the mercy that his loving kindness endures forever and In that, I am blessed by what he does because it was never, ever about me. Why he picked me, why he chose me, I don't know. There are times I'm sure other people are wondering themselves, why me? Why would he choose me to use me in the way that he does? And I think it's because of the honesty, the truth factor, you know, that I'm not afraid to tell the truth and be honest and real about life in general, about all the things that go on in the life of a believer, about how sometimes we compromise in ways we never thought we would, how sometimes we sin and fall down and we need God's mercy in order to heal us, in order to forgive us, in order to bring us to a realization of himself. Because you see, sometimes that's the only way that we learn. We learn by the experiences we go through. Oh, you may have heard the scriptures. You may know what the Bible says. But at some point in time, God's going to take you into the crucible, so to speak, of his own formation of his son in you. He's going to take you someplace you never thought you would go. He's going to take all that you've learned from scripture and begin to work it out in your life. He's going to begin to make you conformable to his image because that's what his purpose is. It's not to make you a superstar. It's not to make you the greatest rock star or worship leader that ever lived. It's to make you who you are in Jesus. In other words, he's going to take you and rearrange your life so that you would become more like him in a more satisfying way that you would discover all that God has intended for you. Because when you do, then you'll know the personal relationship that God had in store for you from the moment that he walked with Adam all the way through to the day that you have found him in Jesus. Because that's what God is all about. God is about making you know him in a personal and intimate way more than you've ever known before. So in that, you know, I'm blessed. I think that I find in my reality that in my day that 
he's told me this day that he wanted me to take the time to become more like him. He wanted me to take these videos even and to begin to conform them into what he wants to do. Not into this kind of like slipshod way of just kind of like, okay, well, we'll just kind of do this our own way, but rather to begin to coordinate them, to edit them, to put them into a practical use that he can use for his glory. Because that's what we're all about, is to do things for his glory and not our own. To lift him up and to lessen ourselves that we may decrease and he may increase. And in so doing, in video, I'm amazed because he's told me when these last couple of days when I backed off to not do work, to not be so consumed with all that was going on, that I had a chance to rest and to work on some things that began to change the format of just these videos even. Now we're beginning to add special effects and put in a beginning and an end and who knows where it'll go, but this journey together has brought me to the realization that I am blessed by you. Because of sharing this with you and being there for me to share my faith, that I could be held accountable for my devotionals that I read every day that you have helped me to do, God has taken that now and said, let's do something more with that. Let's, let's go forward in a more intimate and personal way and let's apply it every day and see what we can do in Jesus' way to share the good news that God has for each of us. So, for me, I've discovered and uncovered during my couple days of rest, even though I didn't completely rest, <laughs> I'm always doing something, that God wants to make us not so much into something huge and mega ministry, but he wants to make us quality people. So if that quality comes in the mega atmosphere, praise the Lord, you are you know, blessed indeed, but maybe he just wants you to be qualified and not have quantity to be quantified for that individual that you're ministering to, as we said this ministry is about. If we only touch one, that's all that it's about in the name of the Son, that we would just touch one and one person would turn around and look at Jesus one more time and decide to follow him. In devotionals, quality makes the difference. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Sometimes we think the busier we are, the most we are doing in the kingdom of God. But that is not how much we do. It is the quality of what we do that makes the difference. Most people will admit that they need to spend more of their time developing good relationships. You can't be a good friend to somebody if you never put any time in your relationship. Ask God to bring someone to mind that he would like for you to bless today. Then follow through and let that person know that God brought them to your heart. I know for myself, I was amazed when someone came up to me and said, you know, I've been praying for you. And I was like, really? Is that a good thing? <laughs> you know, whenever you hear somebody praying for you, you kind of go, okay, now what? And as I got to know the person, I realized that they were just blessing me. At other times, I've had people come up and just give me a free gift out of nowhere to do something unique that was out of the ordinary. And that's what I like about God. I said, he comes to us out of the ordinary and ministers to us in the ordinary. He can take your everyday life and suddenly inspire it in a way you never thought of because he'll bring something new to you that you never realized before. Something that reveals his love for you. Because the reality is today, if you will accept it, Jesus wants to reveal himself in a new, personal, intimate way so that you would have a quality of life that you never had before. Because getting all the toys and having all the things, play things to play with in this life is quantity, but not necessarily quality.